Welcome to part three of how to shoot. Today we are going to be shooting the first drills. In the last part we talked about zeroing, getting a pistol with a red dot zeroed and a rifle with a red dot as well. I have two new firearms, they're different than uh, the ones we used in that last video, but same zero, same optics, same kind of setups, so you guys can see what's going on. But before we actually start talking about the first drills uh, that we're actually gonna be shooting, or that you should be shooting if you're a new gun owner, let's talk about target selection. So oftentimes when you go to an indoor range, and this is kind of what we have simulated here, I have this awesome range I can do whatever I want on, but I'm trying to show you guys what you can do with a single target lane. And even if you're in at a range where you can rent out a bay like this, an outdoor range, which is really the best place you could go, uh, I still recommend doing this. Even if you can set up a bunch of targets, the first thing you're gonna be doing is shooting on one target. So it's gonna look something like this. One of the issues with going to an indoor range is uh, some of the target selection they have. Usually they're giant zombie targets, humanoid targets, people set them up, they put them, that's actually pretty far for how I see a lot of people indoor ranges shooting. Usually they shoot something at like five feet. This is about five or six yards, so like 18 feet, uh, you know, times three. And uh, the problem with shooting a massive target is you don't have something specific to aim at. You know, maybe you're aiming somewhere up in here, so maybe you're aiming kind of where the heart is, maybe you're taking headshots, but overall you're shooting a massive target up close and you're not actually working on something very important that we'll get to. So we have these USPSA targets right here, they're sort of mimicking that sort of style of target, uh, which I don't recommend, I recommend shooting something much smaller. Another thing you can do, this is lovely, lovely weather by the way, but it is kind of unfortunate for paper, is uh, circle targets. Um, these are military style targets. Some indoor ranges will have these. Basically what these give you is much more refined aiming areas that you could shoot up close or shoot, you know, a little bit further away. But even the downside with this target right here is this circle is massive to be shooting with a rifle um, and even a pistol up close. Uh, we want to have something much smaller that we're really focusing on and really trying to align our sight on. So even this target right here, unless you could put this, say, back you know, 15 yards or so, these circles are still too big for what we're gonna be working on today. One thing you can do if you wanna save money and not pay exorbitant fees for targets at indoor ranges, um, I, we should support indoor ranges by other means, maybe not buying ex super expensive targets, is uh, just take a piece of paper like this and then take a Sharpie. It's kinda of wet right here. And you could literally draw one inch by one inch squares. I highly recommend you do this because the first thing we're gonna be working on is getting dialed in with our sight picture while mentally and visually focusing on a very small aiming area, specifically up close. Now obviously if I took this little black box and I moved it back all the way to the back of the berm, would I see this very easily? Not really. Then I'm probably gonna shoot something a little bit larger. But if I'm restricted to shooting up close because I'm in an indoor range, I'm gonna give myself something nice and small. So I'm gonna take this target, I'm gonna staple this up. And we're gonna start with this. So we're gonna start with the rifle. This is another thing I highly recommend, a sling. Now, if you're in an indoor range, this doesn't matter as much because you probably just have the rifle on the barrel or on your little like table thing, kind of like we showed in the uh, first part of this series. But if you're on a range like this, where you're walking down range to the target, you're pacing it, you're walking back and forth, a sling just makes things much more efficient than constantly grounding the rifle or walking around with it and potentially flagging everyone around you. So, the rifle is empty. We're still going to observe the four firearm safety rules. If you are unfamiliar with those, go back to part one to check them out. Gonna load the rifle. And the first thing I'm going to do, if you all did what I talked about in part one, which is worked on your form, worked on your consistency of grabbing the rifle and pulling tight into the shoulder, keeping the stock connected into the shoulder well, then you're gonna be set up to do this just fine. But the main thing that we're testing right now is if you haven't shot a rifle before or you haven't shot guns before, is we've got some jitters that we need to work out. We're gonna be shooting, you know, guns kind of startling, it's loud, especially if you're in an indoor range. And so we just have to get accustomed to some of that. And that's what some of these first rounds are going to be. But with the target that I have right now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just working on getting a good sight picture on this very small little target and then timing the shot. 
And what I mean by timing the shot is, what a lot of people don't realize about shooting rifles accurately is, there's no way to hold a rifle perfectly steady. Even if you're in a really good position in the prone, or you're in a really good position with like a tripod or something, there's always some movement in the gun. Typically what you are inputting into it with your body. So my dot is moving around on the target, kind of like in a video game, for those of you that play first person shooters. And as the dot lands on my little aiming area that I'm mentally and visually focusing on, so one of these little black squares, I pull the trigger. I can't hold the gun perfectly steady, so I'm just working on timing the shot based on my dot landing on one of these black squares. And we're just gonna do single shots for now. So the gun's moving all around, I can kind of see that. All right, that felt pretty good. Let's check the target. So what you're gonna notice right off the rip, so it looks like my gun is off slightly to the left, but that's okay, is I am aiming here at like five meters. Well, my bullets are hitting really low. What the heck? Why is that happening? It's happening because of a thing called mechanical offset. Now this is not necessarily something that occurs with uh, pistol shooting, but as you will see, there is a, a distance, and we talked about this a little bit in part two, between the barrel and your optic. So no matter what, pretty much no matter what your zero is, when you are shooting at close range, your bullet impacts are going to be lower than where you're aiming. Now for the sake of my training today, that's okay. I, I don't really care. The main thing that I'm looking for is this group being about the same size as the little area that I'm shooting into. I also don't want the rounds going off to the left and right. I want them to be nice and centered up about the same size as this. Because as soon as I take this little dot back to 50 or even 100 and I'm just holding center with the target, I'm fine. But because I'm shooting something up close, because maybe I'm constrained by the indoor range, I'm going to have this situation happening at all times. Now one thing you can do for training, and you don't have to do this on your first range day, is actually work on your mechanical offset shooting. Where maybe you want the impact to be in this little black box, so you're actually going to aim up here where you don't have a target in order to get these hits to land inside. But we're not focusing on that right now. We're just focusing on timing the shot based on the dot, landing in this little black box, and then pressing the trigger without moving the gun a whole lot. And so it's given me this nice little group. It is kind of off to the left side, which makes me think my zero might be a little bit off, but it's about the same size as this, so I'm happy. So now that we've got some of our jitters out and we can see kind of what our mechanical offset's doing, now we're gonna start doing what are called ready-up drills. Really what they are is sight alignment drills. So just like we were doing in part one, we're picking up the rifle off the table, getting a sight picture, making sure our form is good, and then putting it back down. I'm essentially gonna be doing the same thing, but with live fire shooting into one of these little black squares. In this case, I'm going to be holding the rifle already at low ready, and I'm not using a shot timer or anything. I'm just deciding when I wanna go, and what I'm watching for here is putting the dot on that little black square and pressing the trigger as consistently and as quickly, as long as nothing's falling apart, as possible. And I'm just getting used to this whole thing. Rifle is still on safe. I'm gonna be working my reps of getting onto fire. I'll be firing a single shot. We're not like focusing on the recoil management a whole lot. And we'll see how this goes. Still off to the left a little bit, but you'll see it's the same distance as this controlled group that I shot, so it means I'm not taking the dot too high or too low. That would spread my group out much longer. It is kind of off to the left a little bit. I did zero this rifle earlier and it seemed fine, but now I'm like, okay, maybe something happened or it's me sucking. And what I would recommend is doing this until you feel very comfortable bringing the gun up and your dot is pretty much there where you're looking. Now this is gonna take some time to get good at. I've shot a lot of rounds, so for this, for me, this is pretty easy. But this is really what you wanna be doing, and it's far more productive than just taking a big zombie target that they have at an indoor range, and just aiming somewhere in the middle. You're probably not even focusing on a specific point, and then just pulling the trigger a whole lot. So this is getting us nice and comfortable timing the shot as our dot is moving around on the square, and getting comfortable actually discharging the rifle. But now let's do one more thing. So when you're on the range doing live fire, there's really only two things you need to be working on. Because most things can be done at home with dry fire. We'll talk about that in another part. But the main thing that we're really focusing on with live fire that you can't really do with dry fire 
is checking our marksmanship, our, our accuracy, firing live rounds, and our recoil management. This recoil is not something you're able to practice in dry fire. Doesn't even matter what kind of little dry fire system you buy, it is not the same as firing live rounds. So now what I'm gonna do is a couple of little simple drills where I'm shooting multiple rounds and getting used to recoil and how the rifle's actually recoiling because that's something that I can't do from home. So I have this target that I showed earlier that's got some larger circles, that'll be okay. I am still going to focus on shooting the smaller ones because the big ones at this distance, like I'm in indoor range, it's just, it's too big. It's too big, it's too easy. There isn't a refined area to put my dot besides trying to hold it perfectly in the center. So I'm just gonna go on the top right dot and what we're gonna do again is I'm gonna fire like five rounds. Only firing two rounds isn't, it's not gonna challenge your shooting like position. It's not gonna challenge how tight I'm pulling the rifle into my shoulder. It's not gonna challenge is my stock not in my shoulder properly. Uh, you really gotta go five rounds plus to actually challenge your shooting form. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be firing five rounds as fast as I'm seeing my dot land exactly where I'm looking. So I visualize where I wanna look at this target. I'm just gonna hold center as best as I can and I'll fire five rounds. All right, that felt pretty good. One thing I highly recommend doing when you're done is what I'm gonna do right here. Before dismounting the rifle completely, I'm gonna do a quick assessment of, is the gun still on my shoulder? Is my support hand still pulling nice and tight to the body? Did I get knocked back on my feet because I leaned back too much? I'm gonna do a real quick assessment and when I'm done, whew, I'm good to go. And now I can reset and do it again. But go ahead and uh, come over here, check the target. So once again, I'm shooting up close so I have mechanical offset, but I'm not worrying about that. So I held center here. My group is consistently right below where I'm aiming. Good, that's what I'm looking for. Small circle, same thing. I'm trying to hold center, pulling the trigger as fast as I'm seeing the dot flash there. There was one in particular, I saw the dot flash down here to the left, I pulled the trigger, and that's what results in this guy right here. Everything else though is nice and tight. I like that, and I was able to shoot it fairly quickly, but we are looking for these outliers to kind of see what's going on. Now let's try to shoot uncontrollably, an uncontrollable speed that's uncomfortable for me, and see how we do. All right, so what I'm doing right there is I'm trying to shoot at such a speed that I, I feel uncomfortable, because that's how you get better, typically. This is, not, this is also a little bit later on, but you, could, you can give it a shot. Still holding dot as center as I can. I ripped, I wanna say, six rounds as fast as I could. I've got one down to here. I got one that flew up here, so my dot was up here probably, I mean, it was probably right here when I fired, because mechanical offset. So my dot was here, off paper when I fired, and all these other ones I was kinda on except for Kind of that one right here. Now one of the downsides to shooting at an indoor range is they usually don't allow you to rapid fire. Definitely not shoot as fast as I just shot right there because that's pretty fast. So for some of this sort of recoil management, trying to push speed type training, you're probably gonna have to go to an outdoor range like this. You probably aren't allowed to do it at an indoor range. But the drills that I showed earlier, where we're just getting a sight picture and shooting into a single small little square or dot are vital and you can do that at any indoor range. So those are the first drills that I recommend that you shoot with a rifle on your first live fire day. I can't tell you how many people I've seen come out to the range, including cops, including some military guys. They have not done a whole lot of just bringing the gun up and putting the dot on targets and they're slow. Or they forget to flick onto fire or they have some other issue or they don't get good stock placement. This is all stuff that can be wrapped out with single shot drills shooting into small little targets. I am not shooting steel and I don't recommend shooting steel until it's probably much later in this series because the downside to shooting steel is you don't know where you're hitting. Now you might say, well, we'll shoot a small steel. So I, if I hit it, it's good, right? You know, same size as one of those circles. Well, the problem with that is when you miss, do you know where you miss? Most people aren't skilled enough to call exactly that was off to the left two or three inches or that was off to the left like a foot because I just muscled the gun and pulled it way down as I pulled the shot. So I don't use steel for training besides shooting targets at much further distances where you know I can see splash behind the target. I'm good at calling my shot. I'm not gonna walk all the way down 400 meters to paste paper, although that is a good thing to do every once in a while. So I highly recommend not shooting steel for a while. Steel is like dessert, gives you some like instant gratification and you feel really good. Spoiler alert, 
most people shooting steel up close are not actually that good at shooting, um, especially early on in their shooting journey or career. Uh, we want to be shooting paper. We want to see exactly what's going on. We want to see if we're pulling shots off to the left. We want to see if we're pulling shots off to the right. We want to see if our zero might be off and then go and reconfirm at 25, 50 or whatever distance we happen to have. So that's shooting the rifle for first drills. It's not super cool stuff. We're not doing a bunch of target transitions. Um, if you do have a bay like this though, I do recommend going to shoot uh, paper at like 50 meters. Basically it ends up being the same drill. We're shooting a smaller target further away or the no a normal target further away, but I'm not having to worry about height over bore. I could just hold center of the target and see kind of what's going on on the target. But most of you guys probably have an indoor bay. This is all you have, but guess what? You could still be very productive. But now let's talk about pistol. So I've got my pistol right here. I'm using a M&P with an RMR. So something a little bit different. I don't shoot these pistols super often. Um, so imagine I'm a new gun owner with my new M&P that I rarely shoot. Now you probably noticed I'm not using holsters. I don't have a full plate carrier on. I don't have a chest rig. I'm not wearing camo. And that's because uh, you don't need to do that for your first range day. You don't need to do that at an indoor range. In fact, you're just gonna look like a moron if you show up to the indoor range wearing cry pants and full kit and it's your first day shooting. And trust me, I've seen some of that happen. A lot of people think I'm going to the range and you dress up for it. Uh, no, just, just wear what you normally wear, even if it's an outdoor range and you'll be just fine. You don't need special pants for shooting on a flat range at a stationary target. With that said, there's actually a very specific reason why I'm not wearing any equipment or even a holster and why I don't recommend you try to use specific equipment or a holster for your first range day. And that's because it's going to distract from the process. If you haven't dry fired with a pistol, with a holster yet, um, concealed or outside the waistband, I highly recommend dry firing with that first and getting comfortable before you immediately start live firing with it. Even when I started carrying a handgun, I dry fired and, and carried with it, you know, un, like kind of unloaded like around the house and dry fired with it before I actually started doing, trying to do fast draws from a holster because I wanted to be somewhat competent and comfortable before loading live ammunition, which is dangerous. That's what these guns are even for in the first place. So this gun's already zeroed. Uh, you know, like imagine from our first range day, we're zeroing our pistols, we're getting, you know, we're getting it all ready. But now I'm gonna be doing my first drills. And just like we did with the rifle, we wanna make sure we are aiming at a small area, a small target area, and we're timing the shot. With a handgun, it, you're gonna see a lot more sway. It's a lot less stable. You're missing a couple contact points, your shoulder and your head touching the stock that you have with a rifle. So this timing portion, while visually focusing on a very specific spot, is going to be even more important. We're still gonna be doing single shots. We're getting those jitters out from live firing a handgun, but we are trying to shoot a smaller target and not a giant massive target that's not gonna actually show us or what's going on and allow us to be somewhat accurate. So, still observing the four firearm safety rules. Gun is locked back, got my magazine. I can see that it's empty. I can load the gun. If I have a table, like it's an indoor range, I can always set it down. But once the gun's loaded, it's gonna stay in my hand until it's empty or until I unload it. Now, just like we talked about in part one, Hopefully you guys have been doing a little bit of weapons handling, training in the house unloaded, uh, but this is where our, our grip on the actual pistol is going to be tested. It's going to be tested with some opposition. It's going to be tested with live fire. So we want to make sure we have that really good solid grip. We're gripping the gun nice and tight. I hope you've been trying to grip the pistol really tight while you've been dry firing or getting accustomed to the pistol and not just dead fishing it, which a lot of people do because they just like hold it up and then, you know, they just hold it up and they're going to run into problems once they get to the range. So I'm still wanting to grip the pistol really tight. And I have my small little circle. So here we go. And now I can unload, because we're gonna go look at the target. Leave it on the table as if I'm at an indoor range. Well, let's look at the target. So I'm not necessarily shooting for time. I'm just getting the jitters out. I'm getting accustomed to shooting a pistol and I'm trying to focus on a very specific part of the target. And when my RMR dot flashes into that area, or if I was using iron sights, I would be doing the exact same thing. Now, in this case, I got four shots I'm really happy with. You know, pulled the trigger when the dot's there, center, I'm happy with it. Got a couple up here. Uh, those were shots that I pulled just as the gun was, uh, as I was pulling the trigger to the rear, I saw the dot flash upwards, and this is why going straight to a red dot for training with a handgun is far superior than what people had access to, say, 20, 30, even 10 years ago. Because I can discern what's actually going on with the pistol even better. And you'll learn some of this on your own. 
That's one reason to take classes is to learn how to discern things and how to analyze parts of the process. But you can actually figure this out on your own if you pay attention. And then you try to reverse engineer why that thing happened. And then you just try to do something different where that result doesn't happen. You can actually do that all on your own. You don't have to get official training. Um, good videos like this definitely helps though. So th that was just a very comfortable, hey, I'm firing six shots. I'm trying to put it somewhere very specific. I'm seeing the dot move around. I'm timing the dot You know when it lands on the target. That's when I pull the trigger to the rear. I'm not letting the gun surprise me. That's some crap from a long time ago. There's a couple ways of shooting uh, a trigger and let's go talk about that real quick. There's obviously a lot going on even though we're shooting something really simple with no other like conditions right now. But you have like three or four things to focus on all at once. One is maintaining that really tight grip like we talked about. One is timing our dot in relation to the target, focusing on the target very specifically, and manipulating the trigger. Now, there's kind of two schools of thoughts out there for manipulating triggers or shooting and you know, pulling triggers and whatnot. There is the uh, prep trigger uh, methodology where you prep as much of the slack as possible and then actually pull the trigger. The method works quite well. One thing I will note though is we are not holding the trigger to the rear as the gun cycles. We want to be pulling the trigger and trying to get off of it as soon as possible. This helps prevent trigger freeze in the future, but it also means, this typically happens with a lot of shooters, they pull, they pull the trigger, the gun cycles, and then as they slowly release, when they hear that click, they immediately fire. And it generally results in horrible accuracy because they're not timing when the shot is being fired, the gun is telling them when to fire the shot because they hear that little click or they feel that little click. We don't want that. We want to be in control the entire time, not letting this little mechanical object do that to us. We don't want to be controlled by a piece of plastic. But, so this method's pretty good. You prep the trigger and then as the dot, you know, the gun's moving around, as soon as the dot flashes onto target, we pull the trigger. That method works well. In time, you will find though, when you are shooting larger targets up close or you just get better at shooting, you find yourself not prepping the trigger as much. You probably take up the slack, but you're just kind of sending the trigger to the rear. And I do this on close targets, and I do a little bit of trigger prep for further targets, and that's okay. Because the ultimate goal to shooting a pistol, like to really distill it down to one thing, like this is what you focus on, is as I'm pressing the trigger, I'm not disturbing the sight. However I need to press the trigger, am I sending my knuckle into it? Am I prepping to here? Am I just pulling the trigger from the front? The ultimate goal is as that trigger is breaking and you hear that snap of you know, the, the breaking and, and then the shots going off, the sight doesn't move. And that takes a lot of time to get accustomed to, but that's really what we're trying to pay attention to here. As I'm pressing the trigger, focusing intently on this spot, I'm paying attention to where my dot flashes. Is it you know, flashing low and left? Is it flashing low and right? Is it going up high like I had on two shots? Or is it staying static? And we're gonna get into that with dry fire here in a little bit, but that's the ultimate objective to shooting a handgun well, is not disturbing your sight picture as you're pressing the trigger. Now, if you haven't been diligent with your weapons handling at home, and you're shooting with a red dot, you're probably experiencing a little bit of this. Where is it? I can't find it. You're probably experiencing a little bit of that. Now that's because you didn't do your homework like you were supposed to and we need to fix that. So what we're gonna do on this next drill, just like we were doing, we fired six like nice smooth rounds, trying to focus at an area, we're timing the shot. I'm gonna actually have the pistol here at what's called compressed ready, or I could pick it up off the table. But for this, I'm gonna go ahead and have it in my hands already. And I'm going to be finding a sight picture, finding my dot, finding my RMR, little, little red dot, and doing the exact same thing, exact same process, single shot, focusing on a very small area, but I'm gonna go ahead and start repping, finding my dot and aligning it to the target. And if you've been diligent with your homework and you've done this at home, it should be pretty easy once you start live firing. But we know not everyone likes, you know, homework and doing stuff ahead of time. So we're gonna work on that a little bit right here with live fire. So got my area that I'm focused on, gun comes up. What you'll see right here is I'm not firing one shot and bringing the gun all the way back. I'm doing a quick little analysis and I'm getting my second sight picture and paying attention to what's going on. Like did my grip change, did anything wild happen? I'm not just sending the gun out there and bringing it in, which I see a lot of people do. A lot of people call this follow through, have a good follow through. And we'll talk about that in some other videos, but I'm still trying to do that. Getting, finding two sight picture, watching my recoil management, and then obviously getting my good rep in.
Let's go check it. So once again, I'm still using a smallish circle at about five yards. I'm not shooting into a big thing and I'm pretty happy with this. Most of my shots are here in the center where I was looking. I've got this sort of one off to the left that I definitely saw the dot flash to the, to the left on. I've got this one over here I definitely saw as well, but this is sort of my target area that I'm really like really trying to focus on visually, um, really trying to land my shots there. And what's really fun is if you're very intent with where you're looking at targets and you're not just like, oh, the entire circle, but you're like, no, 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 this specific spot right here, that actually imp imp improves your accuracy, believe it or not. I wish I had learned this you know, long ago or figured this out on my own. I had some guys that I talked to who explained this to me from another company and I was like, oh, that actually makes a lot of sense. It's kind of the aim small, miss small, but that's not, I mean, it's a decent way of putting it, but it's a little bit corny to be honest. But it is basically what's happening. If I am very intent with where I want to shoot and I am very deliberate with that, that one pixel, you know, as if this were like a bunch of like little pixels, um, you will actually see your accuracy get a whole lot better than just going, oh, and the dot is anywhere on this circle, I'm gonna pull the trigger. Well, yeah, that's how you're gonna miss and be over here and not, you know, not maybe with a, a better group. So, but let's go do some recoil management. What you'll see right there is I had a horrible grip. By the time I was done shooting, my hand had moved. Now, when we're doing these single shot drills on targets, typically speaking, you're not gonna run into a whole lot of like grip issues. You're firing a single shot, you're not having to fight, you know, a prolonged string of fire. And this is why on your first range day, I highly recommend if you can, if you're allowed to rapid fire, um, you actually shoot, and you don't have to do this with rapid fire, you could still let there be a second per shot, but you actually shoot a longer string of fire, five rounds, 10 rounds, to challenge your grip. Single shots aren't going to do that. Because what happens for like 99% of new shooters is they, they start with a good grip, what they think is a good grip, and then as soon as they're on their second or third shot, their hand starts to slip off of the gun, and at some point they end up with revolver thumbs. Uh, I was just shooting with someone recently, and that's exactly what happened. I could get them to start with a good grip, but as time went on, fourth shot, fifth shot, sixth shot, the entire thing is compromised. And then you, you're starting to drop rounds because you're not able to you know, really grip fight against like the pressure and the, the weight of the trigger and just everything becomes sloppy and horrible. So the thing now that we're focusing on is I'm gonna do five rounds, that's enough to really challenge my grip. And when I'm done firing the five rounds, I look at my grip, did it move? Did I see my dot flashing all horribly like I just did on this target? I saw my dot flash nastily at my last two rounds because my grip was getting worse. So now we're gonna work on gripping a little bit tighter with my support hand specifically because that's the one that fails most often. And then at the end, I check it, still in a good spot. My fingers are still, you know, interlocked with my dominant hand fingers. They haven't like slipped off. And that was my group. Shooting relatively quickly with good grip for like seven rounds. Now you're probably sitting there on your iPhone or your couch watching this and going, this is the most boring stuff I have ever seen in my life. I don't wanna do that on my first range day. I wanna get straight to the good stuff. I wanna start running around and blasting stuff. I wanna shoot Instagram drills, printable targets with different circles and have my timer and do all this stuff. Uh, I'm here to tell you, if you haven't done this stuff first, you haven't gotten comfortable putting a stock in your shoulder, pulling the gun nice and tight consistently, aiming at things intently and then putting the dot on there and pulling the trigger and timing. If you haven't done any of that stuff, all the other stuff is gonna be absolute crap and garbage. I wish I had known this when I first started shooting. When I first started shooting, I wanted to go straight to the good stuff. I had the Magpul videos, I saw what they were doing and that's exactly what I wanted to do and I wasted a ton of time and a ton of ammo versus doing some of this early on and you don't have to do a whole lot of it. That's the nice thing. If you're purposeful, you don't have to do this for weeks on end before you get to the good stuff. It, this only requires a few range days before you go, all right, that's what a rifle feels like. That's what a pistol feels like. This is what I, how much pressure I have to apply so that my grip doesn't change after five or 10 rounds. And then we can transition to the more fun things and the more interesting things. So I highly recommend, even if you're someone who thinks you're an experienced shooter or you just, you go out with the boys and you just, you know, shoot trash into a berm, you probably need to go back and do some of this. This is the stuff that is going to make you a far better shooter faster because that's my goal with this series is to get people much better at shooting in less time and with less round count. And for what I just did, I only fired 
like 50 rounds of rifle, I got something out of it, and I fired like 50 rounds out of pistol and I got something out of it. So I'm not having to spend a ton of money to see what's going on, feel what's going on with both of these firearms, and I'm actually, and I can actually get better doing this than wasting a crap load of money, which is what most people do. I hope some of you guys have learned something from watching this, even some of you who have progressed far past some of these very basic initial drills, but maybe you know have an easier or better way or understanding of explaining it to other new gun owners, because that's something all of us should be doing, is educating the people around us. Next part that'll be coming up is going to be about dry fire. How can you actually go back home after doing this and actually build skill without spending a penny because you've already got your firearms. So stay tuned for that.